So the Bagger written by Anton Chekhov. So this chapter is basically about how you need, how you, how you or we can change somebody. So transformation in a person, you know. So what does it require? It's not that only uh, we have to, uh, we can change a bad person from being bad to good one. Even uh, when, if, if we don't treat somebody in a nice manner, even a good person can become bad also. So it's also, it's the, how somebody is treated that matters the most. Okay, nobody is actually a born criminal. Nobody actually is a born uh, thief or a born uh, murderer. So it's the circumstances usually which make one what one becomes. So one's, uh, uh, the way one is treated, okay? The way one is, you know, uh, treated or the way one is, you know, regarded in one's life, that makes him ultimately, okay? So your grooming, grooming goes a long way in making somebody what one becomes. If you are groomed nicely, you become a good person and if, and exactly the opposite in the opposite case. So all those children who do well in studies, who are well behaved, who are always, you know, the, who are always considered good in all spheres, the credit should go to the kind of grooming they are getting, okay, because they are groomed well. So the credit, of course, would go to their parents, to their family, or to the place they are coming, that is school, the teachers. Similarly, if there are some children, those who don't behave well, those who are doing bad or poor in all spheres, then of course the credit will go to the family, the school and the teachers. Maybe somewhere or the other, we are not able to understand them. We are not able to give them that kind of grooming which we expect them to become like that. So it's like grooming is like how you treat others. That is grooming. Okay, how you behave with others, that is grooming. Okay, the kind of mannerisms, the kind of etiquettes, the kind of set the set of value system which we want others to, incul to inculcate in themselves. And when we become the role models in ourselves, only then we can expect others to be the, be the role models of that, right? So here in this chapter, it's not about how you, it's not exactly about the child. Here the chapter is about the beggar. Beggar is the protagonist of the story. Uh, the beggar is named as, you know, Nashkov. So here, basically, it is transformation in the beggar only. So how this beggar is going to be transformed into becoming a notary. He'll become a notary in the end. You know what is a notary? Who is a notary? Find out its meaning on your own. So I'll be giving you some time for your dictionary work. So from being a beggar to notary, and in between, he would be given something else to do. He'll be asked to chop wood first. Okay, he'll be given a very minor work, very small work. Like he'll be asked to chop the wood. It's a work which would require labor. And we will see that this beggar would not be very fit enough to do this work also. And the reason, let us see what those reasons would be. In the story, the main character, Sargi. So Sargi is the main character of this uh, story who comes across a beggar at one place. The Sargi realized that he had seen the beggar somewhere else. But where that per place was, yes, where that place was, where he was asking the so he, Sargi realized that he had seen him earlier and he uh, tried to re remember and he was able to make out uh, from the shoes that beggar was wearing because one shoe was uh, uh, worn very high and the one, another one was exactly the opposite. So he was able to make out from those shoes that he, has, he had seen that beggar at some other place earlier also. So, and at both of the places, the beggar was giving different reasons for begging. He was giving, you know, give different excuses for begging. 
Sargi was able to make out like this beggar is telling lies to the people. He is fooling them. So he told the beggar that if if he would not speak, uh, if he would not tell the truth, then he'll be handed over to the police. So the beggar told the truth, truth that once he had been, uh, you know, uh, whatever he was once, he was thrown off from that job because he was a drunkard. Then eventually he had nothing else to do but begging. So that was only an excuse with that beggar that he had nothing to do but only begging because uh, if you are hale and hearty, if you're all right, even if there is some problem, even if there is some physical disability, even then there happens to be no reason for one to beg, right? But this person was very hale and hearty and he had no reason to beg. But it was only his, you can say, uh, addiction to liquor. It was his only habit of drinking that had made him uh, worthless. So the author told him, narrator, this Anton Chekhov narrator told him, like if he would not agree with him, if he will not listen to him, then he will hand him over to the police. So this beggar, whose name will be Lushkov. So this beggar, the one who had no choice otherwise, so he agreed to accompany the narrator and he was asked, he was offered the job of chopping the wood on the very first of each month. And in return, he would be given some money, of course. So the beggar was taken to the, uh, uh, to, towards the, uh, to, towards narrator's house. The narrator called his uh, attendant, that is one maid servant, Olga, that uh, this uh, Lashkov should be given the work of chopping the wood. Olga took the beggar uh, inside the shed and there she handed over some wood uh, to him, which he had to chop. He was given axe and wood and the beggar started uh, cutting or chopping the wood. Sergi, who was observing all these things, realized that this person, you know, uh, that this beggar was not very fit to do this job because drinking had made him uh, unfit laborer. So my dear children, the fact is like it's a, this beggar was addicted to drinking. So drinking had made him unfit for all jobs. So basically the point is that any sort of addiction, any sort of obsession makes us unfit for all jobs. Okay, when we become addicted to one prop, one thing, maybe it is phone, maybe it is video games or whatever. Whatever one addiction we have that makes us mentally, physically, emotionally, psychologically unfit. Remember this, this beggar otherwise was a very talented, he, he had been a singer earlier. He had been dropped off the choir because of his drinking habit. Okay, so this beggar who otherwise had been a very talented and educated person, was uh, the one who had become a beggar just because of his addiction. Addiction of any sort is, is very, very, very disastrous. Don't think that only drinking is an addiction or smoking is an addiction. Whatever uh, is something with, without which we cannot do is addiction. It can be anything, okay? It can be, uh, it can be the habit of uh, getting up late. Maybe you say like, I'm addicted to getting up late. Or if you say I'm addicted to my phone, I'm addicted to my Insta, I'm addicted to my uh, this uh, social networking, I'm addicted to driving, I'm addicted to this. So without which you cannot manage, that is addiction. And addiction is always disastrous. It is always destructive for you. So this beggar who had been otherwise of such high profile, you know, uh, status, that person became a beggar. And when he was asked to do some job, he was, he could not do it. Sargi was able to make out like this person cannot do work also. But even then, this person, you know, kept on uh, doing the work for some time. And after some time, you know, the uh, Sargi was quite impressed by the tenacity or the hard work of the beggar. And he, uh, and he told him that he had a work for him. So he, this actually Sargi had been able to find a good job for the beggar. So the beggar went off. For two years, this Sargi did not meet beggar. After two years, when Sargi was purchasing tickets for the theater, there he saw 
that there was somebody who was a, a, whom he could make out that it was Lashkov. That then Lashkov was very well dressed up with a with a hat and nice dress. So he was wearing quite expensive dress also. So that was clear that Lashkov, that is the beggar, had become quite well off now, and he seemed to be very respectable also. So uh, Sergei when went towards him. Then uh, the beggar, you know, he told him that he had become a notary now and he was earning good money. And moreover, the beggar, the one who had become notary, he thanked this Sargi for being so uh, kind or being the reason for the transformation. Uh, but at the same time, the beggar, the one who was no more a beggar, he told Sargi that no doubt, Lush, uh, that uh, Sergi was responsible for the transformation, but actually it was Olga that made in that shed. It was actually the Olga, the maid who had been responsible for the real transformation in the beggar. He said like, sir, you handed me over to Olga so that she could give me the work. But uh, I was so unfit that I could not even chop the woods. So she would uh, do chopping for me. She would do all 80% of the work she would do for me. And she would report you that I had done the work. So her that kind of conduct, her that kind of love and understanding for me, that kindness of hers made me change and uh, made me work harder and made me give up addiction to drinking. So when I stopped drinking, when I uh, got rid of my addiction, then I started doing better. And today I am a notary. So all credit goes to you and more than you, the credit goes to Olga. Okay. So the point is what goes in the making of a person. It's not just one's own effort. Sometimes the efforts of the others who bring you up, those who do something for you, um, that also matters a lot. Right. So here, let's see the story now. Let's read it out. The beggar. What induced the beggar Lashkov to change his ways? Let's read out. So that's the theme. What made Lashkov to change his ways? So what is the answer? Love, understanding, and kindness of Olga. So what induced him to change his ways? It was the love, understanding, and uh, kindness of Olga, which made him change from being a beggar, from being a drunkard, from being an addicted person, uh, from being an unfit laborer to a to a notary, to the one who became, who acquired and acquired a respectable job in the society. Yes, uh, we can say the credit should go to Sargi also, because it was he who raised him from the, uh, uh, from the platform of a beggar and may gave him the opportunity to rise higher. No doubt. We need somebody, the one who can give us the chance to do something better, but sometimes chance only is not enough more than the chance, after chance, we need somebody who can understand us, the one who can uplift us, the one who can motivate us to do better. Okay. Kind sir, kind sir, have pity. Turn your attention to a poor hungry man. For three days, I have had nothing to eat. I have had five kopecks for a lodging. I swear it before God. For eight days, for eight years, I was a village school teacher. And then I lost my place through intrigues. I fell a victim to uh, calumny. It is a year now since I have had anything to do. So this is how the beggars ask for alms. Whenever you come across a beggar uh, on the roadway or somewhere, the beggars attract your attention with these kinds of things. I have not eaten anything for a few days, uh, uh, this or that. So this, he's also saying the same thing that he has not eaten anything for the uh, for the last three days. He hasn't got enough money to have a lodging. So I swear before God. So earlier eight years I was a school teacher, but was removed, uh, but was you know dispelled from the teaching profession because of the allegations against me. Okay, I lost my place through intrigues. Intrigues are like basically intrigues are mysteries, but here intrigues might mean that. Uh, he was uh, dis uh, dismissed from the job because of the accusations or because of the false allegations against him. So he says like uh, the advocate Sargi looked at the ra ragged, fawn colored overcoat of the suppliant at his dull drunken eyes at the red spot on either cheek 
and it seemed to him as if he had seen this man somewhere before so it was the advocate sargi who uh, was being asked for arms by the beggar so when sargi looked at this uh, person who was wearing rags and was wearing a fawn colored overcoat uh, of this client so supply to me somebody might have given it to him so the beggar was wearing a uh, wearing a coat which might have been given to him by somebody so he looked at him he found that he was uh, he was his eyes were looking dull and uh, drunken and uh, sargi was able to make out that he had seen that person somewhere else i have now had an offer of a position in the province of kaluga the uh, mendicant went on mendicant is the beggar only i have now had an offer for a position of position in the province of kaluga the mendicant went on but i haven't the money to get there help me kindly i'm ashamed to ask but i'm obliged to my circumstances now what this man is saying beggar he says like uh, now i have got the job offer uh, of a position in the province of kaluga so he has got like job offer but he doesn't have the means to reach there so he says that because of the circumstances i am i am like forced to ask otherwise i i am very really ashamed of asking sargi's eyes fell on the man's overshoes one of which was high and the other low and the and he suddenly remembered something now sargi saw his shoes one shoe was uh, put high and the other one was low so that those shoes reminded him where he had seen him look here it seems to me i met you the day before yesterday in sadovia Sado street he said but you told me then that you were a student who had been expelled and not a village school teacher do you remember so sargi was reminded of the time when we earlier had seen him so sargi told him like you met me day before yesterday at that place called uh, sadovia street and then you told me that uh, you were a student and uh, uh, you, who had been expelled and today you are saying that you were a teacher who had been expelled so what is the fact so you are telling me the lies no 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 that can't be so mumbled the beggar taken aback so of course when the beggar's lies were caught when he was caught red handed or you can say when he was caught uh, telling a white lie he said no he was like shocked i am a village school teacher and if you like i can show you my papers have done with lying have done with lying means jhoot bol liya you ca you called yourself a student and even told me what you had been expelled for don't you remember sargi flushed and turned from the ragged creature with an expression of disgust so sargi was very very you know uh, upset he was very he felt disgust for this kind of beggar the one who was not only asking for arms the one who was not only begging but also telling lies so two sins he was he was committing together this is dishonesty my dear sir he cried angrily this is swindling swindling means cheating i shall send the police for you damn you so this is how sargi uh, warned this thief uh, warned this beggar he told him like number one you are a cheater you are a swindler and i'll and then you are telling a lie total dishonesty so i'll call the police sir he said laying his hand on his heart the fact is as the fact is i was lying now he agreed the beggar agreed he said yes the fact is that i am lying i am neither a student nor a school teacher all that was fiction formerly i sang in a russian choir and was sent away for, for drunkenness so neither was he a teacher nor was he a student the fact is that he was once a singer and he was singing along with a choir you know group of musicians but he was dropped from singing because of his habit of drinking what is fiction fiction is uh, something which is not the reality okay this we say like this story is a fiction fiction means something which is not a reality so he said but what what else can i do i can't get along without lying no one will give me anything when i tell the truth uh, what can i do so this beggar had an excuse he said like uh, uh, he doesn't have anything to do except telling lie and begging will you agree with it will you agree that uh, this beggar had no choice 
except begging and telling lies? What do you say, children, about it? He says that what else can I do? What else I can do means I cannot do anything. I can't get along without lying. Means I cannot manage without lying. No one will give me the job if I will tell the truth. Do you think it is right? Yes or no? If yes, why? If no, why? Raise hands those who can answer. Those who can discuss the things. It's a question of discussion. Like, is the do you support the beggar in what he is saying? Come on. Do you support the beggar in what? Okay, Gurupal. Yes, ma'am. Hmm. Do you support the beggar in what he is saying? Yes, ma'am. You are supporting him? Yes, ma'am. Okay, explain why. Ma'am, because in the today's world, everyone is, everyone helps the, everyone develops the mercy for the, um, for the liars. Hmm? For for a crackling and interesting story, but not for the truth. But why will you support? Why do you support this beggar? He says that he had no option except telling lie and begging. So if if one is if somebody gets suspended from one job, does it mean that the person should tell lie and one should beg? No, ma'am. But you say that you support this man. Hmm. Try. Do you know what is what am I asking? Do you know what am I asking? Yes or no? Okay, Anshya. Gurupal, you may... it, hmm. it is true that if he tells the truth uh, that he is a drunkard, yeah, that then no one will uh, offer him any job. But that doesn't mean he has to beg and tell lies. He can uh, try to give up his habit of drinking and uh, do some work. Yes, very good, Anshya. So first of all, like uh, uh, of course, if he keeps on drinking. Uh, and he tells others that he's he's a drunkard. Then of course he might not get a job. And the very first thing he uh, what he can do to get a job is that he can stop drinking. He has to win over his over himself first. He needs to be determined about his bad habit. He must give it up. Then afterwards he must search honestly for a job. Okay, and uh, searching for a job uh, uh, even if he had to work, uh, he, even if he had to go for a manual job the way he was actually offered. No, nothing is impossible. So begging is a, is a sin basically. Even if we discussed in the beginning, even those people who are physically disabled, you know, even those people should not beg and they don't beg. Okay, nobody is on this earth totally unable. Nobody is a misfit. It's our mind which makes us either a fit or unfit person. So the very first thing he had to do was to overcome his uh, addiction. That is drinking, he must stop. Then he must be like, uh, uh, he must have the determination to get some job and not to ask, right? So he was wrong. Then he says that, what else can I do? Very bad. Okay, now the point is, what can you do? What can you do? You ask what you can do, right, uh, Sarji? Coming close to him, work, that is what you can do. You must work. So when this man said, like, what can he do? Then the narrator became quite, uh, uh, you know, uh, upset at this. He said, like, uh, you can work. Simply you can work. Work, yes, I know that myself. But where can I find work? So that's the question with him. And tomorrow we'll pick up from there only. Okay, children. Okay.